when we look at molarity, there's a few different ways that a question can be asked. And there's, as I see it, three different categories for molarity problems. So let's run through these categories. When you recognize a question and what category it's in, you're actually going to know how to solve it. So it's really helpful to know what kind of question is being asked, uh, what kind of solving method is expected. So let's run through these. First one, unit conversions. What does this mean? And how do you recognize it? Well, unit conversion is when you're converting between volume and moles, and you're using molarity to do that. Remember that molarity is moles per liter. So we can use molarity as a conversion. Now, it might not be as simple as this single step. It could be a multi-step problem. For example, a pretty common one is going from percent mass uh, over to molarity and uh, using molarity as part of that conversion process. Okay? And it can be worded a number of different ways. Now, how do you recognize this type of problem? Well, there's going to be one compound of interest. That will be the compound you're focusing on. And it'll use a molar express. And you've heard me use that term before. Basically, another way, word for unit conversions, where we're going from one unit to another requested unit and uh, going through molarity or using molarity somehow. The second category is dilution. Dilution is really something where we say the moles initially equals the moles finally. And when we dilute something, typically we're adding water, or you can do the reverse, remove water. But when we're adding water, we're not changing the moles. We're just adding more water to the solution. But when we add that water, it dilutes it or makes it less concentrating, concentrated, and the molarity goes down. And since moles are constant, we can use this equation. This is our typical dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2 meaning that the molarity and volume initially equals the molarity and volume final. Molarity times volume, if you multiply volume times molarity, all you're going to be left with is moles. So you can see this really says moles initial equals moles final. Now how do you recognize a dilution question? Well again, like the first one, you're going to have one compound of interest that you're focusing on. However, you're going to see that molarity and volume will change during the problem. Because the molarity and volume change, you're going to see it's pretty different than the first type of problem where those two items would be constant. So the first two are definitely recognizable from each other. The third category we call stoichiometry or sometimes titration. This, in this example, is pretty recognizable because a reaction is occurring and there's multiple compounds of interest. Usually you're focused on two, where you get, you're given information about one of those compounds and you're solving for another. And typically those two compounds are both in the reactants. So usually, yeah, you're dealing with the reactants, you'll need to balance the reaction, do all that sort of thing. And this, and stoichiometry, I want to remind you, has three steps when solving. Step one, take your given and convert it to moles. Moles really are the key unit. Step two, use a molar ratio to go to the moles of the compound that you want to go to, or the one that you're asked about. So step one, go from the given to moles. Step two, use a molar ratio. And then step three, go from the moles to the requested unit. So you might not be asked about moles. You might be asked about volume, mass, even molarity various items that you'll need to basically just convert to. So step one, five moles, step two, molar ratio, and step three, go to the requested unit. Now one more interesting thing about these three, you can often have a combo problem where you're doing two things at once, usually two of these three. So for example, you have to do a unit conversion in order to use a dilution formula. Or you have to do a unit conversion uh, while you're doing a stoichiometry problem. Those can be pretty normal, so you may have to ask yourself, do I need to do more than one of these for a given problem? 